Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we'll wrap this cutie little heart pendant. It's a plume agate doublet, meaning it has a resin backside and the layer of blue in between the white agate stone and the black resin is some form of beautiful coloring. These are sturdy, they're wonderful. I have a link in the description of this video for where I got these. I don't know if she has more, but she has tons of gorgeous cabs that you can pick from. So anyway, let's wrap our hearts and any heart works for this design. So I have started out with four pieces of 20 gauge square soft wire. You can use round if you want to. They are 13 inches long. I've pre-straightened them with my nylon jaw and I've snuggled them up together square to square. I've taped them at six inches, so I'm gonna weave about one inch here. And that's gonna be this little banding section down here. So we just need a foot and a half of wire for that. We're gonna use 28 gauge round wire for weaving. You could use 26 gauge also if you want to. So I have a foot and a half, about 16 inches or so, 18 inches of 28 gauge round wire. And I'm gonna call these frame wires one, two, three, and four, moving up the stack. So I'll insert the first inch of my weaving wire and hang on to it so it doesn't travel while I work. And I've just put my fingernails in here to give the slightest separation between these wires. They're open-ended on this side. So I'm going to weave one coil around frame wire one and I'll actually do five of these single coils. Push your wire up, come through, it makes weaving a little easier if you do that pre-bend. So I have five, just leave them side by side when you weave. Now I'm going to jump up over wire number two, come behind both one and two here and come back down to one. You want to leave this small gap so you want to pull the tension but not so much that you close the gap. So now back up, come completely around wire number three and encircle one, two, and three. Put your finger back here, no bubbles. So the tension is even but not crushing. All the way up, all the way around the stack for weave number for loop number four and then now back down all the way over number three. Just use your fingernail. Scooch them together all the way up completely around number two. And now five single coils around number one. And this is the first segment. Just like that. No bubbles in the back if you can avoid it. You can get your nylon jaw and just give it a little tap once you've weaved them. Scooch them close together. Okay, so then repeat this pattern. I'll go up and come around number two. Go up and come around number three. That little pre-bend helps you 
make this loop too. Scooch them back. They're side by side. They're not crossing over the previous one. Come up. Now around number three. Come up. And now around number two. And then five single coils on number one. And now just do a little tap, flatten those waves out, use my fingernails and carefully tap them into place. So that gives me these two weaves on this side. My heart is about one inch by one inch. So I've done five. I'm going to start again with five and then do the other two segments. So I'll do another five single coils on number one. up, come completely around two frame wires, come up, come completely around three frame wires, come up, and completely around all four frame wires. Just be mindful of what goes on back here, keep them straight while you work. Try to keep your spacing consistent. Come up and all the way around number two, I mean uh, all three. Then come up, come around two, then come up and do five single coils on number one. We're almost done with our little weave here. Give a little tap. And now one more segment. and five single coils to end it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's tap it. Use your fingernails and kind of scooch them over nicely. We can get rid of this tape. We're going to retape it. So don't think we're done with tape. And we're going to get rid of our little tails. Okay. Just going to snip it right here to the up and inside. We're going to bend this inward. So make sure your cuts are on the same side of this frame even if you have to lift one. Don't worry so much about it because we're going to bend up. All right, so the center of that is our tip to our heart. And the angle, not quite 90. Yours might be different. All right, so before I bend it, I'm going to get some fresh tape 
it's a little hard to bend loose wires up along the side of a stone. So I want to come about an inch and a half off my weave here. Maybe two, actually go two. And put a little piece of tape on both sides. And that'll help you take these bends around the stone. Keep your tape flaps going with your points. So both flaps up in the air with the points. Okay, and this was the side with the cuts. I can feel them. So I'm gonna bend that to the inside. I'm gonna take my nylon jaw. I'm gonna grip these all four of these wires right about in the center. A little off center because when you take this bend there needs to be some room for the wire. And that should get you about even. Okay, just like that. I'm just going to check the fit of that point. And that's about right. I like there always to be just the tiny little gap in case I need it. And also when I push in, it just gives a little tension to get closer to the tip there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll try to lower this camera. Hopefully you can see some of that. Okay. To get it around my stone, I like to do a little trick with the tape. If your hands, my hands have trouble holding on to all of it. So I tape the stone to my cry cut board. I'm on a white mat so you can see what I'm doing, but put a little piece of tape like that in the back of your stone. Face it this way or to your strong hand, okay? So the, here to your strong hand. Make sure that there's nothing in your way. And then hold on to everything. You have to brace this side while you bend this side and vice versa. So I'm going to get my tip aligned, put my top, my hand on top of everything, put my thumb here to hold it. And I'm going to take this and just make a nice controlled bend around that shoulder and straight this way. Okay. You're going to earmark the center here where it divots, right? You can mark it with a Sharpie if you want to or you can just eyeball it. Ideally, you're standing up while you do this. I'm going to take a metal plier and I'm going to grip it right there where I think is the approximate center. I'm going to make sure I bend all four wires straight up back into vertical. Okay. When you go to the second stack, it's going to collide and that's okay. You'll just control that. So you hold everything might be off a little bit with this one, but that's okay. Bend it. Put your tape flap down. Just keep all wires together as you make this turn. Okay? Try to get it as horizontal as possible. Just like that. And when you come to this side, if you grip right here, right next to the other bend with about a millimeter. Then bend all four wires straight up. And they should land together pretty well. You can make some small adjustments, it's okay. All my wires are still stacked on top of each other. I'm just going to take any slants and bends out. You can get rid of this little tape. Check the fit of your stone. And that's pretty good. Yeah. Center looks pretty good. Doesn't need to be super tight because we're going to close it up and you've got some room to add wire. All right, so. I like to put another tape just loosely to keep this stack together so there's four on four 
and they're side by side. We'll lock the stone in and then we'll do some work on the veil. Okay, so we need to create a little back seat. The points are going to be forward to the front. Your frame should be sitting level. Okay, and now we're facing the back. I'm going to take a little pair of flat pliers. You could also take your bent nose if you want. You can also take some fine flat nose. I like something about three millimeter. You'll grip right there, right against the coil. Put your finger into this curve and just turn your plier. Okay, make a nice little dent inward. Do the same to the other side. Get right up against the coil and only handle that back wire. Put your finger into the hole and turn. You make these turns about even or try to. Okay. If you need to give a little tap here at the neck to get it back under control, you can do that. And that makes a cute little seat for your heart. Just want to keep these two even up here. If they shift, you just get them under control. That's pretty good. Now you do the same with the front. Separate this little wire, Whoop, not too much. Hold the shoulder. Whoop, wrong plier. <laughs> and just make a little space, enough to get your plier in there. Get right to the edge of that first wrap if you can. Put your thumb up here and turn the plier. Make a little inward dent. You're looking to get over the shoulder of the stone there and that should do it. Don't worry about up here, just keep it all together. And now let's do the other side. Make a little separation with your fingernail. Okay. Get your plier into that space carefully. Hold the shoulder wire and turn in. And that should make two locking bands. And you can just pet them down with your fingers. Okay, keep them on the shoulders here. And that's pretty good there. Your stone should be in there. These side wires, just make sure they land on your stone. If you feel like you need to tighten them up, we're going to tighten all this up here in a minute. So don't worry if they're feeling just slightly loose, but they should contain your stone, right? There should be no, no chance of that thing falling out now. Okay. And you can push these tips down, settle your, settle your pendant to the mat, take the rubber end of your plier, hold the shoulder wires and just tap these corners, tap the corners down. Okay. It's a little hard sometimes to do it with fingers, and so I always, I do this. It's nice. Okay. So you can get a nice look at it. And, you know, optically, we, we want to try to just keep the center of your heart near the tip, point it at the tip. You don't want it listing too far off. And if you need to make little adjustments, you can get a fine plier in here. Sometimes it rolls, right? Listing forward or backward. And just with real fine control, you can take any weird bends out of it. You can even these two up if you need to. And that looks great. Okay. Tap the front here a little bit. Okay, I like it. Okay, so now let's uh, get rid of these tapes. Okay. 
Okay, so before you take all your tape off, I just retaped mine to get it out of the way of my neck here. I've got four wires on, you know, side by side to four wires. I've got my three feet of 28 gauge weaving wire right here. And I'm just gonna wrap up the neck real quick. So you'll just hold the short end about an inch on your heart so it doesn't travel and just make five or six total wraps around all these wires right here to get them all together. One right after the next and it can be, you know, tight, doesn't have to be crushing. Make about five, I like five. Okay, and stay here in the front. Now you can go ahead and tear off all your tape. Be real careful not to dink up all your wires up here while you take your tapes off. You can take the third one off and then there should be two halves of your wires. I, I removed my tape but there's four to the left and four to the right. Okay, And you'll just split those and then take your tapes off. My tape's already off. Just split it like that so you got four. Whoop on each side. My last one went to the wrong side, so I got four and four. Okay, and I've got them all bound here at the neck. Just gonna do some even bunny ears right there. Okay, we're gonna work with the ones in front. So in the back, there's two on this side. Just take them and right here at the neck, you can hold it with your plier if you need to to make sure you got a nice tight grip. You can bend down two in the back, just a horizontal. Come to this side, get a grip on the neck wraps, and bend two down on this side to horizontal so that we can work with these four. Okay? And in these four, there's two in front and two right behind them. So the two right behind them, I'm going to just fan out slightly. Make sure that it's tight, you know, the fan is happening down here at the crevice. Okay. And then put them back together again, side by side. So push these two up slightly. We're not going to keep them this way, we just need to mark them. And if you need to get a little plier to help you level those right there, don't crush them. Just make a little tap tap. Now I like my bales half an inch. So that means from this wrap, we're going to measure up a half an inch and make a mark. Okay. So let me get my ruler out and I'll get a Sharpie marker out. So from my wraps, right there you can land these two on the first marks that's about right here at your wraps you're going to come up and mark a half an inch so straight across here all four wires all right you'll come up so half an inch quarter of an inch and then another half an inch like this. So we'll separate them now. This is your center one and this is where the bale turns at a quarter of an inch. From here to here is the back of the bale and from here to here is obviously the front of the bale. So separate them. Don't worry about the permanent ink. Oop, I just wrapped all mine off. Separate them. Try not to wipe away your marks. 
Okay, keep them even bunny ears in front of your stone. And right here, in the middle of the quarter of an inch, you want to bend them in. So put your finger about in the middle, bend inward, put your finger in about the middle, bend inward. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can fiddle yours a little better than mine. I'm under the camera. Okay, like that. And then here at your last mark, so here's the bend, and then uh, start to just slope them back out again and make them meet up right about there. So just like that. They don't need to be perfect. Try to keep them square, just like that. We've got two by two. My little trick is to um, tape them together. I know tape becomes your best friend when you work a lot and your hands are sensitive. So just a little tiny piece of tape. I'll tape these two together so they make a pair. I treat them like one wire. Okay. Try to keep the flaps outside so they're out of your way. Okay, so let's weave. We're going to treat each pair like one wire, okay? We're going to weave uh, up to here and then stop. So the figure eight weave, my weaving wires on top. I'm going to go through the middle here. You want to separate these. This is about a quarter of an inch. You just want to keep that like that if you can. And I'm going to go over the opposite pair. Do a complete 360 around them. Go one more time. Pass from underneath to the opposite side. Come up. Do a complete 360 around this closest pair. Go back down and pass from underneath. Come back up through the middle. Do a complete 360 around this pair. And you'll have to keep holding your wires back as you go. They're going to want to slide. So it's like one and a half times around, but on the half you're passing underneath to the opposite bars. Okay, so there goes one, and here's the half, turn, and the pass, okay, completely around this guy, and a half more turn underneath, and pass, in between, okay, so right here, they're stacked on top of each other, here they start to fan out side by side, so you'll work them side by side up to here. Keep going until you get to about the middle. The further apart the rails get, the more this weave wants to slide, so you'll have to constantly be holding it back here with your fingernails, okay, as you weave it. And it'll slide a lot when we go from the wides back into the narrows. So you'll just have to work patiently and slowly. At least I do. This weave takes me a while. It's easy, but it's but it's tedious because it moves as you work. So continue this weave. If you want to practice this weave, there's a little technique in one of my playlists about how to do the figure eights bale weave. But it's pretty much this. You can get a practice um, in without doing a whole pendant if you want to see that little short video. So you're not pulling, you're just making a straight crossover, nice and clean.
occasionally you can pull, you know, back on them. Don't let them separate too much. Just watch that these stay side by side and they don't come too close together. If they're starting to overlap each other, just reduce your tension. Get them back into order. If your square frame wires are starting to overlap each other, you can pause and do a little tapping with your nylon jaw. Pull back, make sure they're side by side here. Stay in your pattern. Ooh, I told you three feet, but I might be short. Maybe if you're watching this ahead of time, you can use more like four or five feet. We'll see here at the end what I got. It also depends on how wide you make this distance. You could probably make the distance less and make it all the way with three feet. I've got my inside diameter to a quarter of an inch between these two. That might be too much for three feet. We'll see where I run out of wire. 
So once you get past the center point, the whole weave wants to slide forward. So you're really going to have to work with this bottom finger to keep a, a backwards tension as you work. And don't pull too hard as you're weaving because pulling it actually makes it slip more. So just try to cross the distance with a nice straight even tension but not too much pulling if that makes sense. Maybe I'll make it with three feet. We'll see. See what I mean by it starts to slip? So you just gotta hold it back. I might actually make it with this three feet, so if you're watching this, maybe stay at three feet. <laughs> depends on, you know, weave and the distance you make. It depends a lot on your tension and you, how wide, you know, your spaces are sometimes and how tight you weave or not. So it looks like three feet's gonna make it, at least to here. You always wanna check, make sure your rails are nice and straight. I might have to add some wire, we'll see. You never want to run out of wire in this gap uh, because it shifts and so to add a piece of wire in there makes it difficult to be a bale. Your chain I think will eventually you know run the wire loose over wear. So if you run out back here it's okay. This widest part is where the chain's going so you never want to run out of wire right there. It's okay to add wire, you know, any anywhere from like here forward. <laughs> but other than that, it'll it'll interrupt the wear and the lay if you and possibly the construction cuz the tiny wire chain going back and forth eventually whittles it out. I think anyway. Or maybe I just stress too much about stuff like that. I don't know. I'm going to make it, but barely, at least over to here. I'm going to add some wire so I can, my mark is actually way up here. And I want to make it to the mark if I can. Just keep a nice little tap, keep everything below it nice and in order as you work. So what happens if you run out, this is what I did on the last one, is that you get a little short, see it's going to run out right there at three feet, the same spot. So if you made yours four feet, you could weave down to here without doing this spot of add-on. I didn't even do the other side, I just gave up on it, but you would have to add wire and keep weaving. Uh, I ran out of wire right here at the end of the crevice, which is fine, but to make the entire bale is to here. Okay, just so you know how you can avoid 
that gap in the back that you'll eventually run into. And I'm going to actually use this wire all the way down to the nothingness and try to get as much out of it as I can. And then when I have to add wire, it'll be easy because it'll be here rather than in the wides. might just leave it right there and add a wire. So I'm not going to cut that end off yet so that I know where it is <laughs> when I add my wire. I'm going to add another one and weave down to here. Okay. So I'm going to get another foot. So you should cut four feet. I'm going to instruct you on the materials list to do four feet so you don't run out. Okay, so my wires go in this way and it's ended, right? So I'm gonna cross it in the opposite way, just like it would have come over. Hold on to a little fragment there, okay? Do a 360 to level it and anchor it. And then come across and continue your pattern. We'll get rid of the fragments in a minute, but you need to hold on to it because otherwise the wire travels. Okay, and just get these even again. I'm just going to weave down to my mark. Tap everything. So we're going to bend it that way. So you need to do the cuts on the inside here. So get your two little fragments. Make sure there's no bubbles. Just follow them. Don't accidentally cut anything else. Right? Just make a real clean inside cut on both of those. And then just lay them down. It's probably a cleaner way to do that, but I'm about, that's the end of my bale, and I'm going to flip it in so nothing will get it. I'm not worried about it. Okay, so a few more weaves to get to the mark that we can barely see that we made with our Sharpie marker. So don't be afraid to mark your wires because it comes off. Certainly by the time you patina and polish the whole thing, it's all the pen marks are off. So don't get too tight here. Just make it to your 
to your mark. Keep them running side by side, all four of them. That's about good. I'll leave it right there. I'll leave my six inches on here. Okay. And my two side wires are still down at horizontal. I'm going to trim this leading fragment now from the from the bottom. Just make sure you got a nice tight neck. Get that wire nice and tight and then we can just break it off here at the side we're gonna we're gonna cover you know we're gonna put elements here so you know you can break it off even to the back actually I'm and what I mean by break I mean snip it off don't pull and break it I have to say cut it off just like that okay now get everything into order my two horizontal wires going to level my pendant out, make sure I'm sitting nice, make sure this guy is nice and centered. You have to scooch him a little bit, you can. And then you can get a dowel or you can do this with your fingers. With this type of weave, I actually like to do it with a dowel. So you can use you know, pencils, you can use whatever you like. I get these at the Home Depot and they're long sticks but I cut them down to these little four inch pieces and then I have dowels of all different kind of diameters so right here at the widest part you'll just set your dowel and then roll it over evenly to the back of your pendant just like that bring these wires straight down the back and make sure that you know your weave should land about where the other one does Snuggle it up so that your weave ends up down here. Okay, that looks very pretty. To get it out, you know, you can do a twist, don't just yank. And this is about four millimeter in diameter. I like that so I can pass beads, chain, whatever. Okay, so right here in the back. You just put your fingernail and get it close. Get these two down the middle. Okay, so once you get your bend, um, you can snip the half round off, I mean uh, <laughs> the weaving wire off down in here if you want to on the inside. I gave you a lot of extra wire to give you some design options. But what I'm going to do with these two is simply pass them through that open space, loop them over the shoulders, and terminate them, because I'll do design with these four up here. Okay, so I'm just going to cut my half, I mean, uh, my weaving wire. Oof. Tap it. And then for me, I'm going to cut these frame, frame wires, giving about an inch work with on each side they don't need to be perfect and then there's still some flex in your bale okay so once we get the bend on the bale I like to actually pull it back out again slightly so you've got a nice you know you don't need to go very far and then you can put a turn on these and pass them back through that space just work patiently I'm going to do two at a time. So I'll just take these two and give a bend. Point them in. Get another bend on these two, kind of the same. Get them pointed in. Just like that. Push through. Make sure that the tips aren't scratching on your stones. If you need the help of a plier, you can do that, just push and pull. So I'm pushing with my back fingers. I'm giving gentle pulls on each one of these to help it through here. Just work patiently. You don't want to ruin everything you just did by, by working too fast. OK, 
Okay, so it's a nice clean dive right through there. If you need to, you can take your pliers and just straighten these out. nice and clean and they're through the front so we got two on each side so try to keep them that way right so I got this one I'm gonna pull fairly tight I'm gonna make sure that you don't have a bubble here in your bail so check your profile pull them one at a time so land the next guy that belongs over here in the same order that they go through, okay? Same with this side. Get this inside one nice and up here. Get this outside one. Okay. Whew. Pretty good. If you need to, you can take your plier and tap the whole thing together a little bit. Shouldn't need to. And you can take these two sides um, if you want to and just raise them, get them up out of your way. They'll come back down later, but just raise them. And then that way you can you can take these and come around the shoulder. Okay. I'm just gonna do they're pretty thick so I don't need to go all the way around another time I just need to do this this one pass I'm going to tap them here just work carefully you don't want to crush them you just want to get them nice and flat on those four shoulders cut them right here about one millimeter out and then tuck the ends in okay so I'll go here get them both snipped out and then just work them under nice and carefully like that okay do the other side as well you can get them laying down nice and flat on that shoulder Them nice and close cut them with a couple of millimeter to work with there not too long because you don't want them seen on this side and then just one at a time turn these wires over and tuck them into that space Tap everything down nice and neat. Very good. Okay, and we still have these available to us for design. Very pretty. Okay, so we have four design wires left in our project. And I'm going to start with the left hand side. The one that's most forward. Whoop. Okay. I'm just going to pull it up and I'm going to make a cute little turn about a quarter of an inch from the neck. Just put the pad of your finger on it, hold back here and just swing it over and push it back. Land it right there. Keep these leading wires, you know, nice. There's a lot more wire than you need, but you can trim it if you want to. Now. Okay, and then we'll do the second one. Just go a little higher. Get your finger on it. Pat of your finger and just turn it over the first one. Push it back. And get it side by side to the other one. Just like that. You can pull them out slightly. 
so that there's a little bit for the other side. Now I'll do the other side and you can make these as high up as you want to go. They don't need to be even. So I'll start with this one and we'll make the short one. Just kind of scooch it forward. Turn it with the pad of your finger. Land it right about there. Leave a little gap for the next one. And if this one I want it higher, I can just move it higher as I start. Turn it on the pad of my finger and just guide it into that, that little space. Push it down and move it over. So pretty. Okay. And before we do anything with those, if you want to turn these out for some design, and some elegance and get a plier just real carefully turn it out you can always push it back some if you don't like it out that far and then these top ones same thing just take a little plier turn it out sometimes if it's really long I like to turn the tip back in so turn it out and then turn it back in slightly, like that. Do these two sides. Just handle them from the back. Be careful not to scratch your wire or mess up your beautiful curves already. So cute. Okay, so now we're going to uh, gonna do some design in the front here. Those look really nice. If you need to, and you might, just take and squeeze these a little bit. Close them up slightly. Stay with the grain of your wire here, the motion of your wire. You know, try not to go across it. Okay. Only if you need to, and if your fingers have trouble, then you can use the plier. Just like that. Okay, so I snip these down so that I've got a couple of inches out on each side. And I'm going to do a nice little design. You'll hold the neck here or you can do it with the pad of your finger. Just get a nice elegant slope going with this one. You can use the stone. These are going to go underneath these two over here, so you can lift these two out slightly so you can work. Okay, and Just control this turn. When you get to right about here, snip it. And just give yourself enough to turn into the side of the heart right there. If you need to lift these more, you can just by curling them up a little bit. Don't go too much. It's a little tight. Take it right here and just continue a turn if you can. Work slow. Come from underneath. Just kind of get it pointing that direction. And once it's there, you can turn the tip in slightly and just snuggle it up. Just leave it there. You can come from behind it. And you can just grab that. Just work until you're happy. And you can just shape it with your fingers. Work patiently until you love it. You can even make it a little spiral even. And then the second one, sometimes I like to just echo the first one. Just follow it around. 
you get to about right here you can clip it give yourself enough room that you can turn it and dive it in there So just sneak it underneath there, and then with your fingers, gently push it and shape it in. Come back here and grab it, help it through. Okay, just work patiently. Bring these all the way back to here. Got my finger on it. Just hook it just like that. Point it down. You just lay this one point down. We're going to tie it, so just make it so it's not seen. It's a little tight, but you can do it. Just turn it down. Okay, so pretty. And now these two, you just lay them back down. Clean them up if you need to with your fingers there. We're going to turn this one. Put your thumb right here. I'm going to turn the most inside one into a small, you want to keep this nice curve, so don't start too low. And I'm just going to turn it, it's okay if it lives over that other wire because it helps it to stay, to a tight little curl. I like to do that first and see what I need to snip. So right about there, it's about a six millimeter circle. And you can do whatever you like, you know. I'm gonna snip it. Where's my round nose? Get your round nose on it. Hold the curve to give you some leverage. Make a nice tight little turn. You can reshift things. Okay. I turn it a little bit tighter. So I'm holding the curve here. I'm gonna take the tip I already munched up. And I'm just gonna turn it a little tighter. If you need to, you can get some pliers. I need to. Just like that until you like it, and then I'm going to snip that little tip out that I munched up. And that's super cute. And then you can just echo it with this last design wire, or you can drop it down here into a little curl. Actually, that might be cute. We got a little space down here. Let's do something different. If we don't like it, we can cut it and still bring it up. Okay. Just keep those tight. We're going to tie them, so don't worry. Okay, so get this nice curve. Then hold it with your thumb and try to get a nice slope. Just follow the shoulder of your heart. Along the inside wire. If you have enough length come down here, I'll have to tie it. You can curve backwards. Make like a little soft S. Hold it right here. Get on the tip of it. Hold that outside curve so that you can get a nice turn. Ok, 
Okay, just like that. You don't have to tie it. You can tie it, you know, right here. If you want to. You can tie it over here if you want to. You can hammer it and tie it. Right? You can stick a ball through it. A bead ball with some wires and pin it back. Okay, so there's a lot of options for you. It's very pretty. Also on this little curl, you know, you want to... I like to always push that tip in. Just get some fine pliers and, you know, curl it, kind of spiral it back. Put some ties here, some ties here, a couple of bead balls. You know, once you tie this, this will all settle. It won't move. Tie them here. So that's what we'll do next. If you don't like this, trim it right here. And then you can, you know, bring it back up into the center spiral there. So if you want to see that, I'll just pull it out, trim this off. I like to use my fine plier. Just give it a turn. Try to do this so you can see it. And just kind of echo that first turn. When you get up here, same thing. Try to point that tip back. It's a little tricky. So don't be afraid to lift the wire. If that's giving you trouble, don't mangle it all up trying to get in there. Lift the wire, turn the tip back a little bit, lower the wire, you know, get the curve behind the other one. Okay, just like that. And you can settle it, hold the, the top down, and put a little upward pressure in right here. Don't change anything, just upward pressure, and it settles the bottom. Just like that. If you need to squeeze it, get all the way out here and do a slight squeeze. Lots of wire con uh, plier control. Beautiful. And now tie it up. Okay, so let's tie things up now. I like to use 26 gauge wire when I do this. You can use 28 gauge wire and you can do this however you'd like. Get creative. You can do it with gemstones. You could do it with metal bead balls. I have these little foot balls that I love using. Hmm? So I think it'll fit really nice right across there. And that's what I'm going to do. I might even have room for another little one right there. We'll see. So I'll start with 26 gauge. Let me get these out of the way. And I'm going to thread it into my bead. Center it. I've got about 10 inches just because I like the comfort of being able to hold on to it. And I'm going to pass underneath these two just out the side with about half of my wire. I'll land my bead where I want her. Might be a little tight fit. And then because I'm underneath this one, I want to be underneath the other two. So I'm just going to start that way. Okay. That looks really nice. I like it. I'm going to land it with my fingers. Get these out of the way. And then I like to do what I call stitches. So rather than, and you can come across both of them if you, if you want to, right? But I like to do, and these are loose elements until we tie it here, so don't pull too tight. I'm going to do, whoop. I'm going to do two wraps to this outside one. We'll tighten it up on the other side in a second. I'm 
Then I'm going to jump over here and do two wraps on this one. But I like to come from underneath so that it's clean and I don't have a wire passing across the top. So it's open. I can just slip in there. Work careful so you don't ruin your stuff. Get in there. Make sure your bead sits right. I might have to pull this out a little bit because my bead's wide. So I gotta make room. And I gotta get down here where it's a little more wide. Like that. Just hang on to the other side. And then I'll do a couple of wraps on this one. I like to do three. You can do whatever you want. And you can actually go over both of them. That looks pretty good. Let's make it easy and just go over both of them. We'll do three. There's one actually two. Let's pass again. And three. I'll snip it. Tuck it right there. But don't snip it yet because you got to settle the other side. You snip it now and you start pulling over here, you might pull yourself out. So I like to hang on to it. Make it the same. So we'll do three on this outside one. Get your bead situated now because It'll be final now. Okay, that looks good. And I've got three, and then I go up with my other three. So that's how I'm going to do it. And if I need to pull this out slightly, give myself some room, I will do that. Because you can do that and put it right back. Don't struggle. We are the creator. So you can always move your wire where it's comfortable. And then do your ties. And then put it right back. There goes three. And then I'll snuggle them back up. Make sure this one's pulled forward from the weave so you can get under it. And do three. And I'll work them even again in a second once I get them tied off. Okay, so they're uneven, but you gotta work one to meet the other. Just get them close. And this is why you don't cut this one off yet. So you can make little adjustments. Okay? That looks pretty good. You get the idea. You can fiddle yours till you like it. You can keep you know, wrapping if you want to. Just check the profile. If you got one, you know, wires that are sitting up a little bit, just give a little pressure, settle them down. You know, you can tie another bead, a couple more beads with these, with these wires. I might just do a few more wraps. Hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and give me a comment. Let me know if you made one. Look me up on social media and show me what you did with all your creativity. Woo.
It's a little bit tight in here and I'm talking now. Okay, you guys, happy Valentine's Day. Make a lot of these and enjoy. Of course I'm back. I decided to add another little one millimeter right here to the middle. So I cut off the one side of the 26 gauge and I tucked it back there. And the other one I have here in the middle from this side and I'm just gonna drop a one millimeter in there. Oh my God, I love it so much. And you know, you can either go up with it, but I like that space right there. So I'll just pull back even there. Don't let it kink and just guide it through and land your bead. Don't just pull on it. Land the bead and then pull on it. Okay? So that's a nice clean hold. And then you've got the wire pointed to the back side. Make it nice and tight. Take any bubbles out. Don't pull, you know, so tight that you break it or anything. And find a nice discreet place back here like this shoulder, make a few wraps and keep it locked in, but discreet. Just fit it right in there. I'd make two of them. Then you trim it off and put it underneath. Make sure these guys are not anywhere where they can be felt. I shifted mine when I moved that one, so if you feel like it's going to catch, guard, guard the front of your design. Don't push, don't pull. Just take it and curl it up. Just lock it into that shoulder right there. Point the tip under. Okay? And that one I just kind of leave as cute as can be right there. Shouldn't go anywhere. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed that. Woo! I love this one. Check your sides, check your profile, make sure your side wires are actually on the side of your stone. And parted nicely that your tips here are down. Drop the pendant on your pad and settle it. I like to use the rubber end. Don't wreck your stuff now. Hold the shoulders. Tap everything. Tap your stone. Tap your wire. Tap your design. Tap the neck. Don't crush the bale. Okay? and enjoy. Beautiful, clean, and cute as can be. <laughs>